three, two, one. There it goes. Oh my gosh, that was beautiful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, so tonight I'm going to try to uh, check another box on the ISS bingo card, and that is the International Space Station transiting a crescent moon, which I'm really excited about. So I have that opportunity tonight, but I need to be in this blue band uh, that kind of crosses through this uh, circle around Denver, Colorado. Ideally, I want to be on the edge of the blue band because I want to make it interesting where the International Space Station is passing over one of the edges of the crescent, not through the middle of the crescent, I, just because I think it might be a little bit more interesting. So I'm headed up uh, this evening to uh, somewhere along either the left edge or the right edge of this band. Here we go. Okay, after kind of a loud setup, I'm finally uh, in my peace and quiet here. Do have a highway right there, but it's not going to disrupt the uh, observations, uh, obviously. Uh, I've got the moon in, uh, in my viewfinder, and I got Endymion Crater, which is uh, right here. The space station is going to come in from the right side of the screen here and zip right over that crater if the predictions are correct. The crater is huge. It's uh, about 80 miles wide, two and a half miles deep, and uh, just makes for an awesome target and a, and a really good backdrop uh, for this uh, observation. I'm pretty excited. Uh, it's 17 minutes out. 10 minutes till go time. I just did a practice capture. The worst thing that could possibly happen is that the camera crashes right before the uh, capture, but uh, crossing my fingers that it all goes as planned. We do have some light clouds coming in. That would be pretty bad if one of those just decided to cover the moon at the perfect time. There's one that's kind of targeting the moon at this point. Ugh. Nine minutes. What I can't do is turn my exposure time up anymore. I'm at about 0.6 seconds. Anything more than that, you start getting blurring as the space station goes by. What that means is I have to turn the gain up, and so it, the uh, image will be a little bit grainy. And I also don't want to turn it up too much because the uh, space station, I believe, is going to be brighter than the moon, and so I don't want just a big white ball to fly through. I want to be able to uh, have uh, the details of the space station uh, kind of visible. Okay, eight minutes. <sighs> up here in northern Colorado, there are so many freaking mosquitoes. We don't have mosquitoes uh, down near Denver. Ah, oh, it's a beautiful shot. I sure hope that the predictions are right and the space station just comes flying right through over that crater. There are clouds coming in. This is really frustrating. I'm already shooting through some clouds. Oh! There's just a slight hazy cloud that's sitting over the moon right now. This is going to be so frustrating. There's a cloud that is just lurking right there. Oh my gosh. Oh. I'm just sitting here watching it get closer and closer. Three minutes. We're good, we got it centered. Uh, we're two minutes out. Oh, that cloud. Are you serious? I am gonna be shooting through just a little haze. Kinda curious if I'll be able to see it in real time, but I can't. I need to watch my computer. I don't think it's bright enough to see it under these kind of daylight conditions. One minute, starting to capture. 47 frames per second. Look for it coming from right to left. We'll be lucky to see one frame, 20 seconds. Clouds are right next to it, but I think it's gonna be okay. 15 seconds. 32. 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. There it goes. Oh my gosh, that was beautiful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was super bright. <laughs> it was maybe too bright. <laughs> that was awesome. We were able to see more than one frame. I don't know if, if you guys watched the video of the full moon but uh, that one, I just saw a single uh, frame go through, but that one I saw probably four or five frames. And I'm looking to see if we can see it. Uh, we can't, yeah, it's too bright to see it in, uh, with the naked eye. Oh, and look at that, the clouds are covering it now. Wow, the timing.
that was that was really fortunate timing oh it was still hazy but uh at least it wasn't like this all right i'm pretty excited to see what i got i'm gonna go inside right now and process these pictures and uh, we'll show you what i got Okay, right after I came inside, I did a rough processing on the images just because I wanted to make sure I got what I wanted to and it came out amazing. So check out how this came out. First, we have the video of the pass at 60% speed and I'll replay this a couple more times here for you. And here it is at 20% speed. This is a really good capture. I do not see me trying to improve upon uh, this particular square of my ISS bingo card at all. And then here are all of the images stacked together into a single image. I love that you can actually see some of the brownish color of the solar panels in these shots. Uh, the ISS is almost always just kind of shades of gray in my pictures and it's really hard to see the color, but somehow I got it on these shots. Uh, and the exposure ended up being just about right too, which I would say is luck, but that's also just from a ton of experience of trying uh, different uh, exposure values and uh, different gain values. And man, these predictions are crazy accurate of the flyovers. Remember when I said it should pass right over the crater and zip right over that crater? Dang, that was spot on. And before I leave you, I wanna share with you what I was talking about earlier uh, when I mentioned the noisy setup. Uh, this was miserable uh, to set up in and I had to keep my telescope cover on uh, to keep all the dust out. Uh, but they got done 20 minutes before the ISS passed, so it worked out just fine. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, this would be the time to do it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. could have been worse timing if they did that right during the pass.